Yup, yup. What's going on? You already know what it is, man. It's your boy Teach back. You know what I'm saying? Back with another one for you. Oh man, man. First off, man, I just want to say I appreciate the love, fam. You know what I'm saying? For those of you who uh who found the information useful, man, I'm I'm glad I could be of service, man. You know what I'm saying? I give all thanks and praise for that, man. I give all thanks and praise for you. You know what I'm saying? Shouts out to the bro Lex Will. That joker that had me right. <laughs> well, that joker had me rolling on that video, man. That's crazy, though, man. You know what I'm saying? But I give all thanks and praise. You know that the brother found the information useful, man. And he decided to, to, to put it on. You know what I'm saying? He put it on, man. And so, man, for those of y'all, man, who, who digging the cedar drop, you know what I'm saying? This, 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 this incorruptible wood drop. I'm, I'm coming to y'all with, with, with a Bible study lesson. You know what I'm saying? So we can get them scriptures in there and understand the importance of our connection between these cedars. And you know what we must be. You know what the most high expectation of us is. You know what I'm saying? So without further ado, we're going to get into the drop. Um, first of all, I want to do a little, before I break into the Bible study, we're going to do a little wilderness tree hunt. You know what I'm saying? We're going we're gonna, to um, go to Isaiah uh, 41, and we're going to dig on the trees that's mentioned that the Most High said he's going to plant in our wilderness. So without further ado, let's go. All right, so we over here in the King James, in Isaiah chapter 41. I'm going to scroll down here to uh, verse 19. Okay, so that's what it says. We're going to read, we're going to start at verse 18 and say, I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. <clears throat> okay. Verse 19, he say, I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, the shitta tree. Okay. And the myrtle and the oil tree. I will set in the desert the fir tree and the pine and the box tree together, okay, that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord have done this, and the Holy One of Israel have created it. Okay, so check out this verse right here in verse 19. You see these trees right here that the Most High telling us he gonna plant in the wilderness and and in the desert. You see what I'm saying? And notice right here say the cedar, the shitta tree. You know it almost say it like the cedar. The shit the tree, you know what I'm saying, like a relation. But you know, if you checked out my part two of the Arsura series, you would have seen, you know what I'm saying, how when we go over to the Brent Septuagint, which we about to in a second, that 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 word shit the tree ain't even in the verse. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we're gonna do real quick. We're gonna go over here to the East Sword. And we're gonna catch this verse in the Brent Septuagint, Isaiah chapter forty one, verse nineteen, and say, I will plant in in the dry land the cedar. Okay? And box, and the myrtle, and cypress, and white poplar. All right. So as you see, in the Britain Septuagint, the shitta tree ain't even in there. Right here, we got cedar, we got box, we got myrtle, we got cypress, and we got white poplar. Okay. So back over here in the King James, well, we got a little bit more trees to deal with. Um, we're gonna we're gonna check out some of these trees. You know? So we're gonna um so we see the cedar. We already know what that is. The shitta, y'all should know by now. That's the incorruptible wood, which cedar is also an incorruptible wood. Okay, and the myrtle. Right. So let's dig on the myrtle just for a little second. Um. So this is a little Wikipedia page on the myrtle. Uh, this myrtle right here is the crepe myrtle. Uh, crepe. Crep, crepe myrtle, I don't know, crepe myrtle, uh, banaba, is a genus of around 50 species of deciduous, what, however you say that, <laughs> deciduous, deciduous, I don't know, and evergreen trees, evergreen, you know what I'm saying, a lot of these trees in these verses are evergreen, and when you kind of look at it, trees and shrubs native to India, um, Indian subcontinents, you know, Y'all see that? Dig on that. Um, go down here a little bit. Okay, let me see what I want. Scroll down a little bit. Um, 
see right here it say in the United States it can be it can be seen south of USDA zone 6 doing both uh, doing best in avoiding fungal diseases and mild climates that are not overly humid such as inland California and Texas inland California and Texas that's a region we know it's in between that but so check out this is the US um, DA zone 6 you know what I'm saying alright so let's say it can be found this is zone 6 it, it can be found south of USDA zone 6 as in like a region like this right here you know what I'm saying um, let me see if I can you know what I'm saying zone six is the this brief right here. Okay. Um coming over here, common myrtle, a Bible plant. You know what I'm saying? There's some more information on the myrtle. Um some interesting facts on this uh, you know, evergreen, essential oils. Um you know what I'm saying? Okay, so back over here. So we got these three tackle. Now we're gonna hit up the the oil tree. So a little Wikipedia on the on the oil tree has some verses. You know the same verse we're at. So uh say oleaster Hebrew et shemin. It's crazy to say et shemin because we're gonna kinda get on that a little later. You know what I'm saying? But it's a um rendered olive tree. So they kind of related to the olive tree, uh olive wood and pine branches. So they also related to the pine branches. Um, branches of wild olive uh, was some type of tree distinct from the olive. So they were saying it's like it's kind of like the olive, but it's not the olive. It's like the pine. So you, you can see down here it says it was probably the oleaster, which grows abundantly in almost all parts of the land of Israel, especially about Hebron and Samaria. It had it has now check this out. It has a fine hard wood. That's gonna be interesting because they're gonna say the same thing about the pine. Okay, and remember this word right here, et shemin. It says, and yields an inferior oil. An inferior oil will have no relation to the olive, which however it resembles in general appearance. Okay, right here it say I will set in the desert the fir tree and the pine tree, right? So we got the fir tree and the pine tree. So we gonna tackle these two trees in one. Really, we gonna tackle these three trees. Yep, and we're gonna do it with the pine. So on the pine we can page to say a pine is any any coniferous. Mm, any coniferous. Check that out. You know what I'm saying? Um you know. Some general information. What I want, what I want to do is I want to jump down here to etymology. It says the modern Engl English name pine derives from Latin pinus, <clears throat> which some have traced to the Indo-European based pit resin. Okay, source of the English uh, pituitary, whatever. In the past, pre 19th century, they were often known as fir. Look at that, from Old Norse fir. By the way of Middle English, fear or fur. The Old Norse name is still used for pines in some North European languages. In Danish, fear. You know, you see what I'm saying? Uh, uh, English, fur is now restricted to fur, ideas. So, in the verse, you, you say, he say he go in the desert. You know what I'm saying? The wilderness, and then in the desert, he gonna set the fir tree and the pine, which is really one and the same tree. Alright, so we're gonna go to this uh, Hebrew lexicon, Strong's Concordance. We're gonna search uh, the word pine, see what it's Hebrew uh, meaning or translation is. <clears throat> now you got all these, right, but the ones that really st stick out, you know, it's Remember, S is a tree, but check this out right here. Shemin, Shemin, grease, especially liquid, as from the olive, often perfumed. 
uh, figuratively, uh, figuratively rich, richness, anointing, uh, fat things, fruitful, oil, ointment, olive, pine. So, you know what I'm saying? Check, check out down here. Enduring a species of hard wood, hard wood or lasting tree, perhaps oak, pine tree. So, two, two distinct things right here. We got shaman being referred to pine. And we got, you know, a substance of hard wood being referred to the pine tree. Now, remember back when we was checking out the oil tree, remember what it said? It's shaman. It's the word, you know what I'm saying, for that. Now, we just got that by searching pine. Uh, as well as, um, you know, it refers to pine branches right here. <clears throat> Down here in the scripture, remember what it said? It has a fine part wood. You know what I'm saying? Just like the pine tree. So, check that out. So, you know, as you come back to this verse and you look at these three trees right here, you can see that they kind of really all a little similar. You know what I'm saying? They, they kind of all like lead up to be the same tree. Not the same tree, but very similar trees. You know what I'm saying? Which might be the reason why when you go over to the Brenton Septuagint and you go to the same verse, it don't got none of those trees except for, um, yeah, it really don't got none of those trees except for this. It, 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 it let me see. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> it inputs this tree right here, Cypress. So you got Cypress, right? And Evergreen. And evergreen. Like I say, most of all these trees are evergreen. Coniferous tree. I'm going to get back to that. With small rounded wood cones, you know what I'm saying? Flat shoes. You know what it is? It's basically like a cedar tree. It's like a cedar and a pine tree. You know what I'm saying? But we're going to go to the wiki page on it real quick. Um, cypress is the name applied to many plants in the uh, cypress family. That word, which is a conifer of north temperate regions. It is a conifer. So the cypress is a conifer, right, of north temperate regions. But remember what the pine page said. A pine is any conifer. In genus Pinus, you know what I'm saying, it says that, but I'm just saying, you see how these trees are related. I ain't trying to, you know what I'm saying. Let me go back to it. But yeah, you see what I'm saying. It's a, these trees are coniferous and they evergreen, and so they share the same type of properties and characteristics, so there's no doubt that they'll probably be in the same place. Okay, so um, also we got box tree which if I'm not mistaken yeah it's also mentioned so we'll check that out box tree the genius of about seven seventy species in the family box say maybe uh, common names include box majority of English speaking countries um or box wood in North America so the box, the boxes are native to Western and Southern Europe, Southwest, Southern and Eastern Asia, uh, Africa, Madagascar, Northernmost, Southern America, Central America, Mexico, Carib Caribbean, with the majority of species being tropical. So you know, so we already see, you know, what I'm saying where we at and where it's at, and it's also what. They are slow going <clears throat> excuse me. They are slow growing evergreen shrubs. Okay, and the last tree on our little tree hunt is white poplar. I don't really know where this white poplar come from, but you know what I'm saying? Like as you can see, uh populist album. Now check that out, album. You know, even you know what we were just showing about Laban and Albino being white and the tree is called white poplar. And it's popular album. So, you know, I don't know. You know, you can dig on this tree. 
we can see there's a lot to this tree they you know what I'm saying it's tied in with the aspen tree you see what I'm saying but what I can say a possible connection with this tree remember we was talking about the cedars of Lebanon cedars is a I mean uh, Lebanon means whiteness so the cedars of Lebanon Lebanon is a place of whiteness so you know this is a white tree a white poplar you know it could possibly have something to do with you know going back to a, a clean tree a white tree you know what I'm saying um I don't know some in the translation <laughs> might have got you I don't know but you know that uh let me get out of that that white poplar is still something to look at so all right we're gonna end the tree hunt right there man um I think we pre pretty much tackled all the trees that was mentioned in this verse right here that the most I say he gonna place in the wilderness and in the desert you know what I'm saying places like these where we gonna have to make our exodus to you know what I'm saying so just check that out and um check those verses out so now man, we're gonna get into a little Bible study for those of y'all who like rocking with them scriptures, let's roll. Yo, so I'm gonna do a little Bible study, man. Get into these cedars, get into this incorruptible wood, as in, as it relates to us, you know, and our salvation, our spirituality, what we are to be, what we called to be. You know, what I'm saying as righteous trees. You know, what I'm saying. So we're gonna start just digging a little bit on that, and we're gonna start at um the book of Joel, chapter three. So y'all already know it what what type of time to well on, you know this this book right here. <clears throat> you know, some end times so, so it say in the verse one, for behold in those days and in that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations to bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, right? So just to give you a little preface on what the, the scripture kinda of talking about, we're gonna jump down to verse seventeen. Right. It says, So shall ye know that I am the Lord your God, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her any more. <clears throat> Verse 18. And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountain shall drop down new wine. Okay. Pay attention to this verse. And the mountain shall drop down new wine, and the hills shall flow with milk. And all the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters, and a fountain, right, a fountain shall come forth of the house of the Lord, and shall water the valley of Shittim. Okay, so check check out what that's saying. So, you know what I'm saying? A fountain shall come forth. Uh oh, let me fix it. All right, no, no, I'm only clicking on something. But yeah, so it say a fountain shall come forth out of the house of the Lord, from, of the house of the Lord, excuse me, and shall water the valley of Shittim. So we, we know what? Shittim is the what? The incorruptible wood, the cedar, you know what I'm saying? So this valley of cedar wood, you know what I'm saying? What we've been looking at. So a fountain shall come forth out of the house of the Lord and shall water this valley right here of this cedar wood. So we're going to get some precepts on that. We're going to jump to Deuteronomy chapter 33. So remember, the timeline where we at in, in Deuteronomy 33. Because remember in 34, Moses is buried at Mount Nebo. And then when you go into Joshua, they, they then leave out of Shittim. So we still in Shittim right now. We in the valley of Shittim right now in, in this verse in Deuteronomy. So uh, we're going to jump down a little bit to um, verse 27. All right, we're going to read these last three verses. It says, the eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. Now, hold on. Before I read this, remember Deuteronomy 33 is also where Moses has blessed the children of Israel. So, I just want to say that. And he shall thrust out the enemy before thee, and shall say, Destroy them. Israel then shall dwell in safety alone, the fountain of Jacob. Check that out. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine, and also his heaven shall drop down deep. You see what I'm saying? Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord, thy shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellency. And thy enemy shall be found liars unto thee, 
and thou shalt tread upon their high places. Alright, so right here in the valley of shit to be telling me. You know what I'm saying? The fountain of Jacob shall be upon the land of corn and wine, and his heaven shall drop down dew shall shall uh drop down dew. You know what I'm saying? Going back to Joel, what he say? And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountain shall drop down new wine, and the hill shall flow with milk, and all the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters, and a fountain shall come forth out of the house of the valley, out of the house of the Lord, excuse me, and shall water the valley of Shittim. So, who is that fountain that's going to water the valley of Shittim? That's you. That's you, Negro. You know what I'm saying? Incorruptible Negro. Incorruptible Hebrew, you feel what I'm saying? The the one like the cedar tree, you know what I'm saying? That's you who got to water this valley of uh, cedar. You see what I'm saying? Remember, drop talking about being pure water. That's what we is. You know what I'm saying? We are we are fountain of pure water. You see what I'm saying? The fountain of Jacob that shall come forth to the house of the Lord and shall water the valley of Shittim. Yeah, man. So that's you. You know what I'm saying? That righteous person, that incorruptible person that has to. That, that has to water that valley. So now jumping to, you know what I'm saying, help those understand the personal relationship to being a cedar or, you know what I'm saying, to being a incorruptible wood. We're going to get some verses on that. We're going to jump over here to um to Isaiah. We're going to go to uh chapter 61. We're going to read verses 1 through 3. It says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord have anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. <clears throat> he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prisons up to them that are bound. Pro to proclaim the, accept the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of the vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn. Alright, now check out uh, what verse 3 say. It say, To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil for joy, right? Remember that oil, oil for joy, oil from the tree, the oil tree, you know what I'm saying? Oil for joy, uh, from oil of joy, excuse me, oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they may be called trees of righteousness you see what i'm saying that they may be called trees of righteousness now understanding which trees are called trees of righteousness but we're going to dig on that but but check out what it say that they may be called trees of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified right so the trees of righteousness planted by the most high god okay so we are to be these trees of righteousness that are planted by the most high god right so remember on my last video when we was talking about balaam and balak and all them i'm gonna show you this connection that they make you know what i'm saying just to let you know i ain't really just putting stuff out of thin air i'm gonna show you the connection that they make to you know what i'm saying these trees and cedars so we're going to go down here a little bit. In Numbers chapter 4 says, Psalms 1 and 3 interpret the word cedars beside the waters and belongs blessing in Numbers 24 and 6. According to Psalms 1 and 3, a tree planted by the streams of the water is one that brings forth its fruit in its season whose leaves does not wither. So let's get that. Okay, we're going to read Psalms 1 and 3. It said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. Right? And it says, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of the water, and that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither right his leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper so right here david telling you that a righteous man right he shall be like a tree planted by the river of the water that bringeth forth his fruits in the season and his leaves 
do not wither. So we're going to jump over here to Numbers because remember they made the connection of that verse to Numbers 24 and 6. Right, where, where Balaam was looking at the children of Israel abode in their ships and in their tents. Okay, so right here is Balaam, Balaam is looking at him on um, dwelling in Shittim and he was going to curse him, but he blesses him instead. Remember what he said, how goodly are thy tents, O Jacob, and thy tabernacles, O Israel, as the valleys are spread forth as gardens by the riverside. Remember what's the gardens as well, by the riverside, as the trees of lying aloes which the Lord hath planted and as cedar trees beside the still water. So if David is saying, you know what I'm saying, he shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of the water, whose leaves shall not wither, you know what I'm saying, he's referring, he's referring to the cedar trees. You see what I'm saying? The cedar trees, as the trees beside the still, uh, beside the water, which the Lord hath planted. Right? So in Isaiah, you know what I'm saying? When they're telling us that they may be called trees of righteousness on um, the planting of the Lord, that they may be glorified, we are to be righteous and incorruptible offspring, trees, branches. You feel what I'm saying? And we must bear incorruptible fruit. You know what I'm saying? We must be hijacked free and fully focus on establishing our covenant with the Most High God. You see what I'm saying? Because even when you go to Psalms 92, Let's jump over to Psalms 92. Uh oh. We're going to um, get verses 12 through 15. They say, The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Hmm. All praise to the Most High. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of God. So there you have it right there. All you know, what I'm saying we, we can catch these last two. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing, to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock. There is no unrighteousness in him. Okay. So the righteous shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon, huh? Those that be planted in the house of the Lord, right? They may be called trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord, huh? And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water whose leaves do not wither. Okay. As gardens by the riverside, as the trees of lion aloes, which the Lord hath planted, and as cedar trees beside the still waters. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I'm thinking the Psalms, y'all tripping. Uh, and as cedar trees beside the water. But shoot, man, you know we ain't we in Psalms, so you know what I'll correlate. You know. <laughs> okay, so uh, so remembering, you know, what I'm saying what. Our brother Isaiah, you know what I'm saying, the most high through Isaiah was telling us, you know what I'm saying, about um, that we may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, you know what I'm saying, and so we want to go one chapter back, just to even um, to clarify that, you know, okay, so in Isaiah chapter 60, we're going to jump on down here. To, um, to verse 21 and check out what he said thy people also shall be all righteous they shall inherit the land forever the branch of my planting the work of my hand that I may be glorified right so just like he said right here all righteous the branch of my planting that I may be glorified one chapter up you see that they may be called trees of righteousness planting of the Lord 
that he might be glorified. So you see that? You know what I'm saying? We must be these trees of righteousness. This incorruptible wood. You know what I'm saying? See? Like for example, you know, speaking about the cedar, how like priests was dealing with the cedar. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to tell you like one of the reasons why I named my channel Teach Me To Be Priestly. You know, it, it, it's a lot that go into it. But you know what I'm saying? Just one of the main things for this lesson, man. I'm going to tell you, man. I, I say Teach Me To Be Priestly, man. Because... You know what I'm saying? I want to be more like the Levite. Be more like the priest. You feel what I'm saying? And Massa, everybody else was going wrong. You feel what I'm saying? The Levite, you know what I'm saying? Ain't going straight. They remain incorruptible. You see what I'm saying? They remain incorruptible. And then they slaughter all the Israelites who wanted to rebel. You feel what I'm saying? Therefore, the most I say, you know what I'm saying? Levite, you ain't got no inheritance. You feel what I'm saying? You, I am your inheritance. You see what I'm saying? That's why I say teach me to be priest because we got to have that type of attitude. Like, we don't got no attachment, no involvement, no inheritance with nothing this world or the children of Israel got going on. The ones that want to go astray and be wicked. You feel what I'm saying? The Most High is our inheritance. So we got to be incorruptible like that. We got to have faith like that. Like Job, another Levite. You feel what I'm saying? And be trees of righteousness. You feel what I'm saying? That, that we can be planted in the garden of God. Okay, because even if you go down, you know what I'm saying? You scroll down. Look what the most I tell you. In the, in the same verses from Tree of Righteousness up here. You know what I'm saying? He's saying they shall build the old waste. You know, I'm, I'm just jump down though, right here for the sake of time. They say, but ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentile, huh? And their glory shall be boast in themselves. You see what I'm saying? So the most I telling you right there, you gotta remain incorruptible. Don't have no inheritance. You know what I'm saying? To whatever is going on, all these hijacks out here. Because I need you to remain like the Levites. Because I'm a, cause you are Levites unto me. You are priests unto me. You know what I'm saying? Me ain't going to call you the minister of the Lord. But how don't you remain a tree of righteousness? You feel what I'm saying? Like a cedar of Lebanon. A, a incorruptible wood. Alright, you look even down here at verse 8. Most I say, I will direct their work in truth. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. See what I'm saying? Their seed shall be known among the Gentiles and their offspring among many people. All that see them shall acknowledge them uh, that they are the seed which the Lord has blessed. See what I'm saying? So, even when you uh, check that out, most I tell you, man, for the righteousness, you know what I'm saying, brings the new covenant. But we're going to jump up here to verse 4, right? And see what it say, And they shall build the old waste. They shall raise up the former desolation. They shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. Right? Speaking about these folks right here, these trees of righteousness. See what I'm saying? And the stranger shall stand and feed your flock. The stranger shall stand and feed your flock. And the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. You see what I'm saying? So the nations amongst you who um join unto you, you know what I'm saying, in this wilderness where you build these waste cities right here, they're going to be your, they're going to feed your flock, you know what I'm saying, they're basically servitude, you know how I go like Isaiah 14, you know what I'm saying, but just looking at this right here, where they shall build the um the old wastes and the uh desolations and shall repair the waste cities, you're going to get some precepts on that. Okay, we're going to jump over here to Isaiah, um, chapter 51, and I'm going to get uh, verses 1 through, um, 1 through 5. So it says, Hearken unto me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord, look under the rock whence ye are hewn, and to the hole of the pit whence ye are dead which ye did are dead. Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah that bear you, for I call him alone, and bless him, and increase him. For the Lord shall comfort thee. Check this out. For the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places. Right? And he will make her wilderness like Eden, and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein, thanksgiving, and the voice of melody. 
So just like we was reading in the old the other verse about um you know what I'm saying those trees of righteousness rebuilding the waste places, right? He said he would make her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of God. So what's in the garden of God? Remember that? We're gonna jump over here to Ezekiel chapter thirty one. We're gonna remember in verse three say, Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon with fair branches. But we're gonna drop down um right here to verse eight. They say the cedars in the garden of God could not hide him. The fir trees were not like his bow, and the chestnut tree uh, were not like his branches, nor any tree in the garden of God was like unto him in his beauty. I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches, so that all the trees of Eden in the garden of God envied him. All right, sorry about that. So, um, what were we? Okay, that the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. And those trees, we know for one thing that they're cedars in the garden of God, right? Fir trees, you know what I'm saying? Chestnut trees. But remember these cedars in the garden of God. And then Eden in the garden of God. So we're going to uh, jump back, right, where it says, and he will comfort all her waste places and he will make her wilderness like Eden, right, and her desert like the garden of the Lord, right, by planting these cedar trees with these incorruptible wood, with these incorruptible people in it, you see what I'm saying, because he will make her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of God, right, remember what the Most High told us over here in Isaiah chapter 41, he said, I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, the shitta, and the myrtle, and the oil tree, and I will set in the desert the fir tree and the pine and the box together. And so knowing you got that, you can come back to and jump over here to Isaiah chapter 55. And we're going to um, we'll jump down to verse 13. And I'm um, starting at verse 12. It says, For ye shall go out with joy. Remember joy. And tie with the oil and be led forth with peace and the mountains and hills shall break forth before you singing and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree and it shall be to the Lord for a name for an everlasting sign that shall not be called. So look at that, man. That's your wilderness. You know what I'm saying? That's speaking of your wilderness. That's speaking about you. You know what I'm saying? That's speaking about you. Alright, fam. Hope you're still rocking with me. Um, we're going to jump over here to chapter 17 in Ezekiel. Right? And the first three verses read, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, put forth a riddle. And speak a parable unto the house of Israel. And say, and say, thus saith the Lord God, a great eagle with great wings, long wings full of feathers, which have diverse colors, came out, came unto Lebanon, and took the highest branch of the cedar. So, you know, just check that out. But, you know, that's crazy. You can dig in on this chapter. But I'm going to just get some key things out of it. Um, now, this chapter is talking about, um, mainly talking about Babylon, as you can see here. But look what it just said. You know, and this bird or whatever came unto Lebanon and took the highest branch of the cedar. Remember, in Ezekiel also said in chapter 31, that the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon with fair branches. Remember when they was talking about the cedars of God, uh, the cedars in the garden of God could not hide him. Or the uh, trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. So coming back over here, you're going to jump 
down to verse 22. We'll read 22 through 24. Um, and so this is where the Mosai is bringing together the understanding of the parable. He says, thus, starting at 22, he says, thus said, said the Lord God, I will also take the highest branch of the high cedar and will set it. I will crop of off from the top of his young twigs a tender one and will plant it upon a high mountain and eminence. In the mountain of the height of Israel will I plant it, and it shall, remember that, shall I plant it, and it shall bring forth bows and bear fruit and be a goodly cedar, and under it shall dwell all fowl of every wing, in the shadow of the branches, therefore shall they dwell, right? And the, all the trees of the field shall know. All the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, have brought down the high tree and have exalted the low tree and have dried up the uh, green tree and have made the dry tree to flourish. I, I, the Lord, have spoken it and have done it. So look at that, man. You got the Most High right here telling you that that these Babylonian Assyrians, you see what I'm saying? Though, though we're in the Garden of God, trees of Eden, you know what I'm saying? That was a, a cedar in Lebanon. Okay, and this and this um bird, right? That came unto Lebanon and took the highest branch of the cedar. The Most High telling you. He going to bring that tree down, right? And he going to take a low cedar, a goodly cedar. You feel what I'm saying? He going to crop off from the top of his young twigs, a tender one, and will plant it upon the high mountain of the, upon the high mountain in Emin. You see what I'm saying? In the mountain of the height of Israel will I plant it. Oh, excuse me. Will I plant it? And it shall bring forth uh, bows and bear fruit. And be a goodly cedar. Right? So the most I tell you, he gonna bring down that cedar, you know what I'm saying, that cedar tree, and bring up a, a, a cedar tree from a low, a corruptible people, or a corruptible nation. You feel what I'm saying? A corruptible set of wood that he's gonna sit up on his mountain. You feel what I'm saying? Just like right here, where he says, <clears throat> excuse me, I will plant it. And in the height of Israel will I plant it, and it shall be a goodly seed. You see what he say in verse, in Isaiah chapter 61, verse 3. That, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. Right? So going back, you know what I'm saying? He's going to plant the goodly seed. You know what I'm saying? And they say, all the trees of the field shall know that the Lord have brought down a high tree and exalted the low tree. So you already understand it. You know what I'm saying? Where I'm going with this and what this means. Is. And even to prove it further where it says, uh, and be a goodly cedar. And under it, so under the cedar, shall dwell all fowls of every wing. And in the shadow of the branches, therefore, shall they dwell. So in the shadows of the branches, um, and under this goodly cedar shall dwell all the fowls of every wing. You see what I'm saying? You can go back to Isaiah 61. Okay, and, and, and read verse um read verse five right here. It says, And strangers shall stand and feed your flock, and the sons of the aliens shall be your plowsmen and your vine dressers. So these strangers right here. Let's dig a little bit deeper on who the strangers is. You can go to Ezekiel chapter 47 and um, scroll down to about verse 21. And it says, So shall ye divide this land unto you accordingly to the tribes of Israel. It shall come to pass that ye shall divide it by lot for inheritance unto you. And to the strangers that sojourn among you, 
which shall beget children among you, and they shall be unto you as born in the country amongst the children of Israel. They shall have an inheritance amongst the tribes. So these strangers are the ones that shall join among you, right? These other nations, the, the ones who gon who gon um who gon stand and feed your flock. You know the sons of the alien, right? The other nations that's gonna be your plowmen and your vine dressers. All right, this uh even a little bit down. Right here, at nine to say, and their seed shall be known amongst the Gentiles, right? And their offspring among the people, and all that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the Lord hath blessed. So they are the seed that the Lord hath blessed, right? Speaking about these that might be called trees of righteousness. This goodly cedar. You see what I'm saying? And the other nations that dwell up under you and dwell in the shadows of your branches. As even in Isaiah where it says, For the Lord will have, in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1, it says, For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the stranger shall be sojourned to, uh, with them. See that? And the stranger shall be sojourned with them, and they shall cleave unto the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and, and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. Alright, just like in like I say in Isaiah sixty one. Right? And the strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. Right? So, understanding that man, you as this cedar, as this incorruptible wood, you are the goodly cedar. You know what I'm saying? The tree of righteousness planted by the Most High. And it's funny because that has a relation. You being in connection with this tree has a relation to your exodus away from wickedness and into cleanliness. You know what I'm saying? Into whiteness. This tree of whiteness, which you are represented to be. Alright man, so we got two more two more verses, man, we gone. You know what I'm saying? So right now I'm gonna come out of Zephaniah chapter two. I'm gonna skim through this chapter, man. Y'all go catch the whole chapter, but I'm gonna just read three main parts of it. It says, Gather yourselves together, yeah. Gather together. Gather together, O nation not desired. Bring the decree uh before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as chaff. Before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you. Before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek, ye, seek righteousness. Seek righteousness. Seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid. Right? In the day of the Lord's anger. Right? So, ye shall be hid from destruction. Okay, we're going to jump down a couple of verses. We're going to read these, these three verses right here. And the, and, the coast of, and the coast shall be for the remnant of the house of Judah. They shall feed there upon in the houses of Ashkelon. They shall lie down in the evening. For the Lord their God shall visit them and turn away their captivity. I have heard the reproach of Moab and the revilings of the children of Ammon. Whereby they reproach my people and magnify themselves against my book. Verse 9 says, Therefore, as I live, says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, surely Moab shall be as Sodom, and the children of Ammon as Gomorrah, even the breeding of nettles, salt pits, and perpetual desolation. The residue of my people shall spoil them. And, pos and the remnant of my people shall possess them. Okay. Jump down a little bit. Verse 13 he say, And he will stretch out his hand against the north. And destroy Assyria. And will make Nineveh a desolation. And dry like a wilderness. Now check this verse out right here man. Because when, 
I first read this verse, I really ain't even know how to take this verse. It say, and flocks shall lie down in the midst of her. All the beasts of the nations, right? Understand what it's talking about. Both the cormorant and the brethren shall lodge in the upper lintels of it. Their voice shall sing in the windows. Desolation shall be in the threshold. For he shall uncover the cedar work. All right, man. So give all praise and thanks to the Most High, man. We're going to make our ending our dismount right here in Isaiah chapter 32. We're going to read verses 14 to 20. You know what I'm saying? Just understanding who we are to be, our connection to this tree. You know what I'm saying? And as well as our exodus in places of this tree and these trees. You know what I'm saying? Just understanding these sacred trees, man. It's really about our sacred trees. Our trees, man, there's so much drop in the trees, man. It just ain't about, you know what I'm saying? It ain't about just some trees, man. These really are sacred trees, man. These trees have a connection to us. We tie to these trees just like an avatar. You've seen the connection these people have with these trees, man. I've been showing you, man, through scriptures in this video, man, how you are this tree, man. You are to be like this tree. You see what I'm saying? And this tree is a reminiscent of your characteristics. You see what I'm saying? It's waiting on you to be what it's supposed to be unto you in these last days. You know what I'm saying? And so I want to read uh, chapter 32, verse 14 through 20. And it reads, Because the palaces shall be forsaken, the multitude of the city shall be left. Left. Look what that said. See that? The multitude of the cities shall be left. The forts and towers shall be for dens forever. A joy of wild asters, a pasture of flocks. Until the spirit be poured upon us from on high, and the wilderness be a fruitful field, and the fruitful field be counted for a forest, then judgment shall dwell in the wilderness, and the righteous remain in the fruitful field, and the work of the righteous shall be peace, and the effect of the righteous shall, and the and, and the effect of righteousness quietness and assurance forever and my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation and in sure dwelling in quiet resting places when it shall hail coming down on the forest and the city shall be low in a low place blessed are ye that sow beside all waters that send forth thither the feet of the ox and the ass shalom israel